Brandel Chambly joining us on loan for the Golf Channel. Brandel, how are you? I am. Uh, I'm splendid. Weather's nice here. Major championship. Got all the best players in play. I couldn't be much better, Dan. And the course, of course, sets up nicely for Tiger. Doesn't every course set up for Tiger? <laughs> well, no. Uh, I don't think Augusta sets up great for him uh, anymore. Uh, but this one certainly does. Most of them do. I thought Marion did. Uh, I was a bit shocked uh, by his play at Marion. Uh, going in there, I thought he'd own that place with that little cut trap three five wood that he hits off the tee, but it didn't turn out that way. But unbeknownst to us, he was injured. But he's not injured this week, and he comes in here uh, on all cylinders. So, yeah, this golf course definitely fits him. Okay. He said this has been a great year. Now, to any other golfer, to any other golf fan, I would co-sign on that and say, yep, great year. But if I said to Tiger, you can trade in all these other wins for the PGA Championship, what would he do? I wish you were in the media center. I wish you would ask that question because I think he'd have, he'd have been caught. Uh, he'd have been caught with his hand in the cookie jar because uh, this is not a great year. By well, why didn't standards. anybody right. ask that, Brando? I, mean, I don't know. That's a great, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, hey, listen, we'll give you all these five wins back. You got a major. Do yeah, the trade? No. He said, hell yes. <laughs> that's what he'd have said. No. Hell he, yes. No, he'd go, well, that's hypothetical. <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe he'd have tapped ass around it, but maybe he'd have been, maybe he'd have caught him and he'd been human and he'd have said, hell yes, because he would have, because that number is all that means anything to him. He didn't put Sam Snead's number of 82 wins on his wall when he was a kid. He put Jack's number. He's headed 18, and he knows when he wins a major championship, everybody, including myself, who says he's not back until he does win a major championship, will be hushed to some degree. You also said... This was a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was after the British Open. He should fire his swing coach, Sean Foley. Uh, pretty strong statement for a guy who's, you know, according to him, having a great year. Would fire? Would bringing in another coach or bringing back one of his coaches help Tiger win majors? I think so. Uh, you know, I think when I see Tiger Woods be a different person on the weekend at major championships than he is on Thursday and Friday, uh, and I see him making all those rehearsals on Saturday and Sunday. I, I do think that what he is trying to do is is more complicated than he needs. I, I think if he had a teacher who was less theory and more practical application, uh, I think it would it would serve Tiger better. And and listen, you know, it, it almost doesn't matter. I mean, he won with Butch, he won with Hank, and he won with Sean Foley. All three of those are vastly different swing philosophies. I, I think, Dan, you could teach Tiger Woods and he'd come back in three years and win five golf tournaments. It's, it's not a teacher, really. Uh, it, it, it's Tiger. And I've always said, when he's half as good as he can be, he's twice as good as anybody else. But in this particular <laughs> instance, he, he's, 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 not, he's not the Tiger he was before. Under Hank Haney, he had a one-way miss and a less complicated move, and he was a better ball striker. Uh, I don't say that Sean should, or Hunter Mahan should fire Sean, and I don't say that Justin Rose should fire Sean. And listen, if I was playing the tour today, I'd probably take lessons from Sean. Yeah. I probably would want to, but I would also try to only take out of Sean's knowledge what I could use in the simplest possible way. I see Tiger 2 bound up on the weekend at Majors. Well, you know what it is, Brando, is greatness cannot be explained by those who are great. If you know McEn so McEnroe couldn't explain his artistry, he was just McEnroe. You know, Joe Montana. I so don't think thought. I think Tiger thinks, and I, I've never seen him. I know that he, you know, he's, he he understands the game, and you know, he sees things that nobody else sees, and plays shots and all that. It's just I don't. I see him acting like guys who are just on tour sometimes rehearsing instead of just saying, "All right, when I get this close, about five feet, and then I make birdie, and then I'm going to be this, and I'm going to go on to the next hole." He's actually rehearsing a swing like we would on the weekend. You know, you're, you're right. You know, you, you couldn't teach that give that McEnroe had when he was volleying, when he'd just give and the ball would just barely get over there. I mean, that was an amazing attribute that he had. But you had to be so into the moment to do that. And here's the thing about Tiger Woods. When you, got your, when you believe in what you're doing, when you believe in it, well, then you can, in the heat of a major championship, Look at all of the intangibles, the lie, the wind, your adrenaline, the situation, the whole location, the dangers. 
the more intangibles you can access. But when you're thinking about your golf swing, the less intangibles that you can access. And that's the, that's the larger part of why Jack was better coming down the stretch was Jack believed in what he was doing. He wasn't thinking about the mechanics of what he was doing. Tiger now thinks about the mechanics, so he misses. You hear him complain now about green speeds. You hear him complain yeah. about holes playing longer or shorter. Those are all intangibles that he would pick up on if he was only thinking about them, looking at them, feeling them with his feet, looking at other players, but instead he's rehearsing his golf swing. This would be like you as a journalist having a series of questions you're ready to ask somebody, and instead of listening to them, you're thinking about your question, and then you miss something that they've said. You don't do that as a journalist. You're in the moment. You're, you're listening to the person you're talking to, and then you respond to them. You have questions to fall back on. Well, that's what Tiger used to do, and now then he's thinking about his questions. Final 30 seconds. Who's had a better year, Tiger or Phil? Phil. <laughs> but he's not the favorite, is he? No, he's not the favorite because this golf course doesn't fit him the way it fits Tiger Wait, it Woods. doesn't set up for – I saw where he – Phil doesn't even have a driver in his back. Well, he doesn't have a driver, but at impact, the club that he's hitting off of the tee has about nine degrees of loft. Oh, okay. That's a driver, okay? <laughs> uh, he doesn't call it a driver. He calls it whatever the hell he wants to call it, but it's a driver, okay? It's a driver. All right, if Tiger Woods is hitting three wood off the tee and that impact, that's got about eight or nine feet <laughs> lost on the tee. So that's a driver. Okay? You know what it, it is, may though? may not be a driver to you and I, Dan, it, but it's a driver to them. But, Brando, it is mental with these guys. When they bring a driver out, something says something to them. A three wood says smooth, easier. Driver well, says, yeah. let's just swing the hell out of this. Well, maybe. But they can see what they can do with those three woods is that they can – they can trap them. They can hit down on them, almost like an iron shot. And with a driver, they can't do that. They got to sort of, ha- you know, they got to they gotta release it. They got to hang back. Well, you know, who knows what's going through Phil's mind. But with Tiger's mind, a driver swing doesn't really match up with the swing he's trying to make. All right. Who's your pick, by the way? Tiger. And, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I mean, this golf course has got eight dogleg rights on it, and it really doesn't make you miss it or have to play right to left. Uh, Tiger Woods, you know, he the last time he won a tournament by as wide a margin as he just won Bridgestone was in 2007 when he won Bridgestone and he went on to win the PGA, the golf course, everything that's going on. I think Tiger. How about you, Dan? Who do you like? Uh, you know, damn it, Brent Snedeker is going to win a major one of these days. I'm going with him. I like I him, you're right. him and Ian Poulter. How about that as a sort of a hey. – I'd love, I, hey, I'd love to talk about those guys. I love them. They're great interviews, great guys, <laughs> fun to be around. I'm with you. Let's right. get them on the air. Thank you, Brandel. Thank you, Dan. All right. Brandel Chambly, Golf Channel. They got uh, wall-to-wall coverage live from the PGA Championship, airing highlights, interviews, analysis uh, before and after uh, each, uh, each day. Frank Nobolo is great, too. Rich Lerner, the host. They've done a great job. So um, you can watch that primetime on the Golf Channel.